So let's start by looking at stage one, where we have uncracked concrete and materials are elastic. They're, they remain in their elastic regions, their linear elastic regions. And so what that suggests for the strain definition so in terms of strains, this means that the strain at the tensile fiber or at the bottom of my beam here, which is made of concrete, is less than the tensile rupture strain of concrete, this epsilon r. All this means, this inequality implies that we are uncracked. Now since my materials are linear elastic, this has implications on the strain in my concrete in compression and the steel strain in tension. My steel strain is linear elastic, which means it has not yielded that's epsilon y so that means steel is still in the linear elastic region and the concrete at the very top or the compressive strain of the concrete at the top fiber is less than the proportional limit in compression for concrete and the proportional limit is really kind of like a yield strain it's analogous it's not exactly the same because it's concrete doesn't have a very well defined yield point and so this implies that the concrete concrete in compression is also linear elastic. Because my materials are linear elastic, I can relate the strains to stresses by Hooke's law, which is that you know the stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain. And so the stress profile, if you want to draw it, would also be linear, would have the same neutral axis location. Here, you know, every single point except for where this epsilon s is is concrete. And so I'm going to take the modulus of elasticity of concrete and multiply it by the strain strain and compression, and I would get a stress value in compression. So I would call that F comp, which would have been EC times epsilon comp. And here, this would be, again, linear. And I'm going to draw an arrow here to indicate compression. And I can calculate all these values right here, all the way down to the neutral axis, which is going to be 0. None of my concrete has cracked in tension, so I'm going to continue here, linearly down. And there will be arrows, again. I'm going to call this point the stress and tension, and this here, I'm going to call that the stress and steel, but you have to relate the stress and steel by the modular ratio. So this value right here was actually this, the stress and steel divided by the modular ratio. Because the strain in steel, or the steel has a much larger modulus of elasticity than concrete, almost 10 times, 8 to 10 times. The stress in steel is actually going to be like this. It's going to be a much larger arrow. Fs is equal to Es times epsilon s. And if you wanted to relate it to the stress profile of this concrete line right here, you'd have to divide it by the modular ratio, which is, and you can prove that from mechanics of materials and equilibrium. Again, we start with the strains, and it has implications on the stress profile. Now, one of the first things you want to do in the analysis is locate where this neutral axis depth is. And because it's linear elastic, you could use the transformed area method or even force equilibrium. And when I say force equilibrium, I mean the resultant of the compression force and the resultant of the tension force here and set those equal to each other. In general, I think the transformed area method is easier in this case than, than using force equilibrium. And one issue that comes up is whether or not you should include or ignore the steel. And really, that's an option. You could do the transformed area method, including both steel and concrete. Or you could ignore the steel entirely. So assume the cross-section is just made purely of concrete, and, and then do your analysis which becomes very simple because you don't even need a transformed area method. The centroid is right, or the neutral axis, which is right where the centroid is, is right in the middle, and then you know your analysis is pretty straightforward. The next thing you have to do is normally calculate stresses from a given moment or calculate moments from a given stress. And the way you would do that is to use the flexure formula, which in some books looks like this, F equals MY over I, the moment of inertia. And normally you don't calculate both moments and stresses. Uh, you're given one and then you calculate the other. 